Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in the Ark. Yesterday, I came on here in my robe, and then last night, I was back in the emergency room, and now I'm back out, and now I'm at the park. Complications just seem to go on, right? You know what the beautiful thing is? There was a time in my life when things went wrong, and I had to go through pain, that I turned into a state or place of mental suffering, and, well... I'd lose control of everything, and I'd feel out of control, and being in relationship with my father through Christ is the greatest thing ever, and I don't, I don't have, I'm not in control anymore, and he takes care of things in a way that I couldn't, and instead of having to be afraid all the time, he just keeps making things work out, and it doesn't mean I don't experience fear, it's just... It means that every time that fear pushes in, I have to go back to the Holy Spirit and be like, Lord, help me with this. And he does. Always has the right words. Always has the right thoughts. You know? You have to excuse me. I'm trying to get comfortable here, friend, with this procedure on the prostate. Sitting in an easy task on a wooden bench. Now we got a yellow jacket that decided he wants to have a sip of my coffee. I know I don't like sitting up at that end if I come down here to this pavilion. But since that yellow jacket thinks that's his end of the pavilion, I don't really want to argue with him. In fact, here, he, uh, maybe it wasn't him. In, I don't know if you know much about yellow jackets. I used to trim trees a long time ago. And I'll tell you one thing about yellow jackets. They're not necessarily the friendliest thing in the world. Uh, they have a tendency to be a little bit aggressive. But come September, it's like they have, they know they're not going to make it anyway. So they kind of get this attitude. <laughs> and so I really don't like to mess with them then. And they have a tendency to, I don't know. Friend out, I'm not even sure why I got on here. I'm just grateful. I come out here, I spend a little bit of time talking to the Lord, and thinking about how things are going. I watched a video earlier today, and I'll tell you, the way things are going just aren't really good. And I was actually looking for a Bible story on, that's what the, the Holy Spirit told me to put Bible in the search there on Hulu, and there was some Bible stuff come up, but nothing nothing was seeming like I was supposed to watch it, and then it came up to the world is, uh, an, uh, I forget what it, the exact name, but it was saying, you know, kind of like the Matrix, the world is actually um, not real, which is kind of true, right, because you understand that if in the beginning, there was only God, and that means that there was nowhere to put any of this except in God. So it's kind of like we're in the mind of God. And we have these, this divinity within us, and that is the thought of Christ, which is love, and the thought of selfishness, which is Satan. And when we don't focus on one, we end up focusing on the other, and Christ gave you this path on how to do this. The great thing is, you think, at least whether you did or not, I thought I wanted to be in control. Control is an illusion. And anybody that really wants to be in control might find control for a while, but they're going to lose it. And they're going to call it, it's, they call it suffering. And so I don't want to be in control anymore. I want God to be in control. And I always seek him to do what me what he would have me do and he said i'm supposed to just keep doing what i'm doing come on the video talk to you all about the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience because that really is the truth friend i hope you're uh getting that and if that's the kingdom you want then getting to know that christ is really important you know get a red letter edition of the bible and read what jesus said and read because it did tell you that the world was made through christ right right in the Bible, in the beginning of John. So understand that 
the Father's in him, and he's in the Father, and we're in him, and because we're in him, we're also in the Father, and the Father's in us. So this is just the facts. And that kind of almost matches up a little bit with what they're talking about, but it's not kind of what you think. And if you think that it's okay to just cause other people suffering, well, then you're going to receive suffering for it. But you receive it right while you're doing it. You think you're doing okay, and you think you're in control, but you're really not, and you know it. And you've got to plot out. A friend, I was a person that lived a life, nothing I'm proud of. God forgave me all my debts, and he'll forgive you yours. That's the great thing about Christ. His forgiveness is complete. But if you're not going to seek the kingdom, you're not going to find it. And because you don't find it, you're not going to have it. And at the end of the age, you're going to run to the store for oil when you wake up. So if you're waking up, this is a great time to go get your oil right now. Oil is love and faith. You're going to need faith to walk through what's coming. There's a lot of self-righteous folk that say they have a relationship with God and how righteous they are. But they, they're not in relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when things aren't going well, they're, not, they're going to be alone. And they're going to feel that thought of Satan is going to have power that they thought it never had. So I'm telling you, this is the great time to get in relationship with my Father. But that's why I'm always talking about the red letter edition of the Bible. Because Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would testify to you about Him. And he said, be glad I go to the Father, because I go to the Father. The Spirit of truth is going to come to you. And even though what I tell you is true, even greater truths will you be given. Now understand, your truths aren't going to look like mine, necessarily, exactly. But they're going to be based on Christ, and we're going to love and forgive each other, because that's what Christ told us to do, right? And we will be able to discuss, hopefully, that how our thought processes and not have to judge one another for them. I personally love talking about Christ. That's why I come on this video. But when I talk to people, most people are so narrow-minded on what their reality is to what they have to believe that, you know, I can't have a good conversation with most folks. So I just love talking to people because me and you came from two different experiences. You've never gone through the things I've gone through. I've never gone through the things you've gone through. We're all unique in our own way, and therefore God's got to lead us to this place called the kingdom in his way, in his time, and if we trust him, he'll do it, right? So this isn't about what I do. It's about what my father does for me, but I have to have faith and make the right decisions, and Christ taught me how to do that, and I'm not saying I always make the right decision. That's why I have forgiveness, right? But I repent every day. If I if I make a wrong decision, I believe I did, I will ask for forgiveness. And I'll be like, Lord, forgive me. And he's like, you're forgiven. Do you forgive everybody else? I'm like, yes. But I'm not out intentionally hurting people. I already know what. I already know that I don't want what the world has. I ha I tried for that. When you're trying to struggle for two kingdoms, you're going to come to this problem. To have more, you're going to have to be selfish. And the more selfish you become, the less Christ-like you'll be. And you'll end up traveling the wrong path. Because Christ told you the path was, you know, narrow. And wide is the path that leads to destruction. That's the path to selfishness. It's about when it's all about us. So I don't want it to be about me anymore, friend. Not even when I'm going through things hard and, you know, it's easy. My thought of selfishness wants to be like, poor me, but that's not true. Everybody's going through a hard time about something. You've, you've gone through something, friend, and some more than others, right? But we're all going through things, and we often feel alone in what we're going through. And with well, the Holy Spirit, I don't feel alone anymore. And that's just the most wonderful thing ever. And even though I'm going through it, I'm also being mindful of, like, I'm supposed to be taking care of my mother, and she's been taking care of me, right? And I know that the more distraught I become, the more distraught she becomes. So I'm also, because I'm in relationship with God and finding peace, joy, and love between the hard moments, 
it allows my mother to have peace when she stresses out very easy because of the dementia symptoms she's having. Now, she doesn't have a, you know, they never titled it because my mother won't go to a doctor about it. She just tries to make her life work around it. She writes things down and she's gotten further and further and she stresses easier and easier. And some days she's a complete mess and other days she's all right. She used to be able to do real estate. She, oh, she was amazing. She was this amazing person that could do all kind of stuff. And well, now she doesn't have that ability anymore. You know what? She took care of me, loved me, and didn't judge me when I was having my hard time. So, you know, it's my turn to love her, take care of her, and not judge her, right? So that's the way that works. And it can be frustrating sometimes, friend. There's just no lie about that. Sometimes I don't even do it right. Sometimes I get frustrated and it, I express it and then I have to apologize to her and then I apologize to God and I'll say, Lord, I didn't mean to get upset over something so petty. Would you forgive me? And he's like, I'll forgive you, Jason. And so, you know, it just is what it is. This, this life, it's about finding peace, love, and joy. And the joy is that I get to help her just like she got to help me. And that's what love is. When each of us have less and another has more, that mo person with more has more to give to those that have less. That is the experience of love. That is the purpose of this world. My father lets people hungry so that you can feed them. He lets them naked so that you can clothe them. And those of you that want to choose the kingdom are supposed to be thinking in that kind of manner, not about what it is you can get for yourself, then it's all about you because that's all about selfishness and therefore Satan. So you want to get your mindset right if you want this kingdom, because you can have it right here. And it's like, like I said, it's not that you're going to be perfect all the time and you're not going to make mistakes, because you're going to. And you never have to worry about whether I may get it done right or not, because, well, Christ already did it perfect, right? So he's your guide. You get that red letter edition of the Bible, and he's your roadmap to the kingdom. And my father will start putting those parables and hidden secrets together. Jesus said, I'm going to reveal secrets that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. Friend, they're there. There can be joy in this. Even when you're not having, even when it's not going right, you can still be at peace. And when you lose your peace, you can get it back faster and faster the further down this road you get. I lose my peace, friend. Just the other night when I was in really bad pain a couple nights ago, the emergency room the first time, man, I was, I, I was, I was bad. And, but I kept turning to God and he kept telling me, it's pressure, Jason, don't call it pain. And he would talk about, and, and he talked me through it. And it didn't mean I didn't scream a little bit. I ain't lying. I, I'm, a, I'm a coward. I told you that from the beginning. I'm not one of those people that suffer quietly. Christ died like, you know, they talked about him dying with glory, you know, you know, with honor. Not me, friend. I wouldn't be like God. I'd be a screaming crybaby coward. But I love my father. He's worth it. This relationship with the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of my father, is worth it. Get to know the son. Inside out, upside down and backwards. All right, friend, well, just know I love you because my father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.